Are we ever really ready for medical school? Probably not. With medical school season coming around, I thought what better time it is to actually give up some of my tips on how I actually navigated my way through first year of medical school, more specifically in the Czech Republic, more specifically in the first faculty of medicine in Prague. Now, I did speak to a couple of people from other faculties, for example, like HK and also the third faculty. We do have some sort of similarities with the way that we do exams and all that. And so hopefully this video can give you some of the insight that I sort of really needed before entering first year. Because before entering first year, I didn't really know anything. And so hopefully this video will you know, give you guys a helping hand and what to expect. If you're new here, hi, I am Rafi. I am gonna be a fourth year medical student in a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, I'm actually very happy to share some of my tips with you all because first year is crazy. All right, so on with the first tip, and that is to basically teach yourself concepts orally. And I think in other terms, it's also known as the Feynman technique, whereby you have to explain like concepts as if you're teaching it to someone who isn't like a professional at that field. And I could not recommend this enough because personally, I was a writing type of person. Uh, my exams back in high school were, were all written because I did A-levels back then. So with medical school, having oral exams, they were completely alien to me. So with the two most important subjects, which are anatomy and histology, um, they're basically just mainly memory, root memorization subjects, whereby you just have to memorize all the topics and all the information that you're learning throughout the semester. And so really speaking it out loud kind of helps you regurgitate that better, especially during the finals when you're being cross-questioned by professors. Um, it's a really scary place to be in, but once you've actually, you know, get used to communicating your concepts and actually familiarizing with like um, the sort of hidden gaps in your knowledge because while speaking you can really tell the difference between how much you really know and how much you understand just by speaking and so I could not recommend this enough. Just to give you background information, for example with anatomy we have two parts for the final. We have the dissection part and we also have the theory part. Um, the dissection part, for example, we have to identify the different parts of the bones, the different parts of organs, their functions, their topography, which is their relation with other organs and their location. Um, for histology, we have, for example, two parts as well. We have the multiple choice part and we also have the um, theory part, which is whereby we have to identify the slide that we're given. Um, for example, you know, what type of cell it is, where do you find it, and also like what type of staining in the slide it is. It's a lot of just, trust me, like it might seem really easy that I'm telling you right now, but like it's a lot of memorizing. And so if you don't really keep up with your studies throughout the semester, then you will struggle a lot during finals. But personally for me, I think consultations were absolutely a really, really underrated thing in medical school. Um, I know not a lot of people actually do consultations because one, they don't really know that we could do consultations and they don't really bother to ask the professors for consultations. And two, they might just seem like, you know, they're ready and, you know, <laughs> they don't really need consultations. But trust me, like, consultations is the best way to know whether or not you're ready for the finals or not. Which brings me to my second point, which is building connections with professors and seniors. Connections in medical school take you way far. Really, it really does. Um, because without connections, without you know having a relationship with your professor, um, I wouldn't have done as a lot of consultations I would do like back in first year and also maybe in, in, also in third year and second year as well. A common misconception is that in medical school, everybody's just mean and cutthroat and that is absolutely not true. Everybody just wants to help each other and we're all just trying to survive this roller coaster. So that could not be further from the truth. Again, with consultations, you can identify the gaps in your knowledge. Um, but, you know, before consultations, I would usually come up with questions that I have to sort of make sense of the whole subject itself um, and to basically solidify my basics. 
and then ask them towards the professor and then they're more than happy to help and honestly it's the best decision I've made um, for example a couple of weeks before the final or maybe two weeks before the final to actually do a consultation and man seniors they are so helpful with all the tips they give as well I think the most important tips you can get from exams are from seniors because they you know they experience the exams themselves obviously but they also have experiences with different professors different questions and also they might give you some insights on what each professor wants and what each professor needs one of the most important tips that my seniors actually gave me is really managing um the time that you book for your exams um, which is also another new thing because in medical school in Prague, we actually have to book our exam dates um, Which brings me to my second point, which is mastering time management, especially exam booking um, This is where a lot of students actually fall short um, Because they either for example might book it a bit too early and then and then they're not prepared or they might book it a bit too late and then once they fail that exam session um, they don't have any other dates because they really left it at the end. And I forgot to tell you this, but we have three chances. And so you really have to be strategic on the way that you book your exam dates because um, not all the seats are available for everybody. Seats are limited and depending on each subject, it might be annoying for some subjects because I remember for histology, it was a really, it was, a, it was kind of a hassle to book a really good date because they didn't really have a lot of seats for example 10 people for one date personally for me the way that i booked my exam was on the second week of finals um that way with the first week i could get some intel on how the exam went and then the second week i would just be prepared and i think for me personally like um when you do your when you really leave out your exams towards the end I feel like you become too fatigued to really go on so I think that was one of my main reasons on why I wanted to really finish my exams early-ish um, to just get it over with and to focus on my next you know subjects that I have to do which brings me to my second point which is to study smart and not just hard um, you know, for example use active recall payment technique um, you know strategies to basically just not go through cramming because a lot of students that I know they don't really make it through first year <laughs> down. They don't really make it through first year because they cram a lot of their subjects till the end, which is completely unreliable if you're going to medical school. So I promise you like, that is not worth it. Do not cram yourself. Um, each semester has its like subjects and topics. So for example, in the first semester, we basically hone in the basics of histology for example and the general histology part and so what I could not recommend you enough is to basically just solidify your basics 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 you can pass with basics and get a C but if you don't know your basics it's immediate fail it, the professors will not even bat an eye so please please really really strengthen your basics on anatomy, histology, or any other medical schools. And yeah, so basically back then, I used a lot of Teach Me Anatomy for anatomy, obviously. Jankira for histology, uh, professor slides and lectures. I would go into lectures sometimes, depending on how strong I am at that topic or how interested I am, to be honest, because you really do have a choice on whether or not you attend lectures. Um, Personally, for me, I'm not a lecture kind of person because I lose attention span really quickly. Um, but yeah, for example, Ninja Nerd is absolutely a beast for anatomy, especially for neuroanatomy. Neuro neuroanatomy is one of the hardest parts of anatomy, so I suggest him for that. Um, and I think I have a couple of resources that I will link in the description below for, for example, histology, so just check it out. And the last tip that I have for you, it's not really relating with the study and the finals, it's mainly just living life, um, especially if you're new in Czech Republic, and that is to learn Czech and learn its basics, um, because it, it can really take you a long way. Um, I know a lot of people who have really bad Czech and you know it's really hard for them to navigate through the country itself. 
And plus, when you're in second year and third year, you get to interview patients for their patient history, and in that sense, you obviously have to know some sort of basic check, right? So it can really take you a long way. In summary, first year is just, again, a lot of root memorization and just a lot of time for you to figure out your study um, system and the way that you work and how to study. Um, but again, really, really focus on trying to communicate properly, um, especially during finals, because some professors are ruthless um, with, with specifics and details. Um, and so really try your best to um, communicate properly in that sense. Without further ado, I think that is it for this video. If you have any more questions, just type in the comments below and I will do my very best to give you some of my, my answers or just basically what I've experienced through. Um, or you can DM me through Insta um, if you prefer that way. Um, and yeah, see you in the next one.